Welcome to this Houdini notebook tutorial. This video is part of the Side Effects Labs notebook. And in this video, we're looking at the Labs Settlement Connections node. So this is a sub-level geometry node. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a geometry node over here. And let's use the settlement connections. So you'll see labs settlement connections over here. Now it does require an input and all it requires is a couple of points. And it's really simple to give it these points. All we have to do is go over here, create a grid. And generally the settlement connections is going to work on landscapes or terrains. So we're going to want a area that's fairly big. You can actually see that the defaults over here have a reference distance of 100 to 1000. So all we have to do is have a grid size that's more or less in that ballpark. So in the hundreds or thousands of units. So we're going to increase our grid size to 1000, scatter some points on it, and we'll just reduce the number of points to maybe 50. We plug this into the settlement connections and it just creates this sort of lattice, right? It creates a bunch of connections between each of these points. If we want to visualize those points that are incoming, let's just copy two points. I'll copy a cube and now we can see the endpoints, right? So this is all it does. It just connects up certain settlements or points based on a few parameters. Now, the parameters that it looks at is distance and angle. You'll see that we have an avoid small angle between connections. And if you disable this, it'll create loads and loads of connections. That's generally not what you want. So we remove that and we have an angle limit. As we reduce this limit, you'll see that we get closer to this avoid small angles between connections result. And as we push this up, you'll end up with fewer connections. So this is a fairly intuitive way of doing it, but we can change this uniform angle limit to a varied angle limit based on distance. So these two values work as a ramp where 100 is going to be the low end of the ramp and 1000 is going to be the high end of the ramp. And we go between this value of angle 25 at the low end to an angle of this 30 at the high end. As we push this up, you'll see that it cuts off some of the paths very similarly to how when we have our uniform angle limit. And that's really all there is to this node. The only other thing is down at the bottom over here. You will see that we have two output attributes. We have endpoints and we have distance. By default, distance is disabled. If we enable it, all it is is an attribute that tells you how far it is between these connections. So it's a primitive attribute that you can use to figure out how long a particular connection is. Okay, so how do we actually use this in a meaningful way? Well, we can combine it with a couple of other tools for pathfinding. So over here, we have a terrain, and this is just a bunch of height field operations just to generate this height field over here. All I'm doing is taking a height field, adding a noise, slumping it, projecting a distortion onto it, distorting it again, layering it with the original, remapping it, and eroding it. Okay, so that's what we have. Now, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to have to set up costs. Right? So we want to create paths on this terrain, but paths need costs because we don't want a particular path to just go straight up a cliff. That's generally not going to be how we want our paths to be set up. Instead, if we have a location on the other side of this mountain and one over here, we want it to go around the mountain as opposed to over it. So how do we figure out which areas have a high cost in terms of traveling? Well, we can use the terrain analysis. So terrain analysis over here. It's also a lab tool. Plug this into first input and we have terrain analysis being performed on this. You will see that it converts it to a geometry from a height field and the resolution you can of course change over here. The important thing is to output this slope attribute over here, right? And if we go over to the visualization and enable it and then switch to attribute and go over to slope, you can now see that those white areas are the areas with the highest slope. This is useful because now we can use that as a cost attribute. So we take that and we'll be using it a little bit later on. So how are we going to use it? Well, let's set up all of our settlements. So we're going to scatter some points for our settlements. And there's loads of ways that you can do this. You can get much more controlled with how you manage this. For example, you can mask out areas that are too high, or you can mask out areas that occur in areas where you don't want buildings, or you can mask out areas that are, say, underwater, but we really aren't going to bother with that for now. So all we're going to do is just add 50 settlements, right? So those are going to be our settlement points. We then just use a settlement connections. Right, so labs settlement connections, plug this in over here, and it just creates these connections for us. Of course, you can make changes to these angles to end up with fewer connections. Once we have that, we're going to have to take our terrain analysis, combine it with our settlement connections, and then figure out the cost attributes so that we can change these connections. The way we're going to do that is by using the pathfinding global. So labs pathfinding global, plug this into the first input, it takes your connection network, and second input takes your terrain analysis, we give that a chance to calculate and you'll see that it affects our lines. Now we haven't actually set this up correctly yet, but all that it's doing is it's taking this input geometry and you'll see that it's actually snapping each one of these points 
to a grid point or a center point on the grid. So that's why we have this very geometric shape to our pathfinding. Now that's because our source for our point cloud is set to existing grid points. We can set this to scattered points and what it'll do is it'll now create points that it can snap to. So if we go to our visualization and say visualize point cloud, you'll see that it's created all of these points and these are the points that it can snap to for pathfinding. We can also visualize our terrain or visualize our settlements. So with our terrain visualized, you can see that it is still going up these extremely steep areas. That's because we haven't set up our cost attribute. So to do that, we go over here to our pathfinding to the first tab. So over here, put in the name of your attribute, we'll call this slope. And that's the attribute that we generated on our terrain analysis. You'll see that it doesn't actually change anything. And that's because this attribute weight is only one. If we set this up to a higher value, like 50, you'll see that it now starts to respect it a bit more. And if we go way higher with this, so like 500, it'll respect this as much as it can. Now you will notice that there are still some areas which are on very steep areas of our terrain. And that's because it simply cannot find a better path than what is available. And if we take a look over here and visualize our settlements, you'll see that these are just placed in very inopportune places, right? They're on very steep areas of the terrain. So of course, it's still going to try to create paths between them, but it's not going to be perfect. And this is what I meant by only placing points in areas that are perhaps low lying or areas that aren't too steep. It's so that we can avoid these sorts of settlements. But I'll show you another way to cut off any paths that may be connecting them. So it's now currently working, right? It's connecting up all of our settlement points. We're using the settlement connections and it's finding the most efficient path between these settlements while taking the slope into consideration. But what happens if we wanted to avoid certain areas? Let's say that there's a big boulder or something in the way and we want to avoid it. Or let's take the example of an area that's perhaps just open plains, right? Let's just say that this area over here is just a big open plain. Well, we can actually mask out that area as a place to avoid. If we go over to our terrain analysis over here, what we can do before we convert it into this geometry after our height field erode, let's use a height field paint. And let's just paint in an area. So I'm going to paint in the area that I wanted to avoid. I want to avoid this big open area in the middle. And I want to avoid, let's just say any of these mountains, right? So don't cross any of these mountains. And these are the areas to avoid. Then we go into our terrain analysis. Now, if we go over to the analysis over here, you'll see that we have avoidance. So we enable avoid. It'll ask what we want our avoidance to be generated by. And by default, it's second input. I'll show you how to use that shortly, but we have it as a height field mask. So we have our height field mask coming in, and that's going to be used as the avoidance. And we can actually visualize the avoidance over here. We have slope and we have avoid. So you can see that those are the areas to avoid. Now, if we go over here, we create our settlements, we go over to our pathfinding global, you won't see any change. And that's just because we have to tell it that the avoidance attribute that we created is now available. So activate avoid, and you'll see that it cuts off any paths that try to cross into that area. It will try and go around it as best it can, but if it can't, it's simply going to cut it off. So you can see that the settlement is now remote, it's no longer connected to anything, and so are all of those up on the cliff. As for the second option for how to include avoidance, we can go back over here. And instead of doing the height field mask, let's use a second input. Once again, everything will connect up because we no longer have an avoidance. To re-add the avoidance, we use some sort of object or geometry, and we can just put it in an area that we want to avoid. So you can think of this as an obstacle. So I'm going to just make a sphere that is 200 units. And let's take a look at our terrain. So let's say that we don't want anything crossing this cliff over here, right? So we're gonna put our sphere over here plug that into second input. And now if we go over to our avoidance, you'll see that it's avoiding that sphere. So when we do our pathfinding, it'll avoid that area. And you can move this around or you can attach multiple geometries, you can just merge them all together. But you'll see as we move this into different places, it will attempt to avoid it, right? So there we have it. It's just avoiding this giant sphere. So this is really cool because you can do all sorts of things from here. You can use this to create paths for your game, or if you're just using it in Houdini, what you can do is you can simply affect your height field with these lines. And I'll just give you one way of doing that. We can use something like a sweep node. So sweep over here. We'll set it to a square tube. You'll see that it converts it to these tubes. And then we can change the width. So let's make it the width of a road, maybe like 10 units, something like that. And this isn't the best way to do it, but it is an option. Then what we can do is take our height field. So let's just grab our height field from over here. We can use a project. So height field project. And you can see that it introduces those paths but there's loads of options. So for example, you can set it to minimum and not hit farthest and it'll carve into your terrain. We can also do a mask by geometry. So mask by geometry over here, height field, grab your height field, grab the geometry and it'll create a mask for you like that. We can also then blur that mask. So height field mask blur. And then we could use it for something like a remap. So over here we can grab our height field road and let's just use a remap 
over here. It's a height field remap. We can compute the range. And if we reduce the maximum over here, then all of our roads will be slightly inset. As you can see, the lower we push that, the more it goes down, or we can lift them up, right? Also controlling the blur for a sharper displacement. We can even do a copy layer over here so that we can go from mask to something like road. And then if we do a visualization, so height field visualize and clear our mask, we'll then have access to that road that we created. So we can just type road in here and you'll see that it adds these roads. And of course, you can take your settlement connections and create geometry at their locations. So there we go. That's how we use the lab settlement connections. We can use it with the terrain analysis to find our slopes and areas to avoid. Then we can plug it into a pathfinding global and it will adjust our paths based on that slope and that avoidance value. And just like that, we can create paths on our terrain that we can use in a game engine or just simply for rendering. So that's all for this part. I do hope that this was useful. I'll be seeing you soon with another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.